Hey everyone, it's been a while. Today I want to talk to you about something I've been working on for a few months now. It's called Valve. We've all seen those clickbait articles saying don't put R in production or questioning whether or not you can even make a machine learning model with R and if so, can you put that in production? And a lot of those hot takes say that you can't. Most of what people say can be applied to any interpreted language like Python. All that stuff is a bunch of malarkey. Would you shut you up? You can put R in production and if you write R, you should. But we as the R community need to learn how to put R in production and be better advocates for it. Let's get down to it. Let's talk production. When I say production, I'm talking about making your code work with any other system. And that's where RESTful APIs come in. If I've lost you at RESTful, I have a video that I'll put somewhere around here from about two years ago that walks through it in a pretty basic way. REST relies on HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's what the internet runs on. I like to think of it as a common tongue or universal language. REST APIs provide a language agnostic way to provide functionality over the web. In the R space, there's a package called Plumber, which lets you build those. Plumber essentially converts your R functions into a RESTful API, letting you expose R functionality over the web. It lets you take a function definition like this and convert it into a URL. At its core, Valve is a web server designed to run multiple Plumber APIs in parallel. Valve will spin up and down Plumber APIs as it needs. Valve is designed specifically to work with any existing Plumber API. So as a consequence, any of your existing Plumber APIs can run with Valve. That also means that packages like Vetiver, which if you're not familiar, is a framework developed by Julia Silge and Isabel Zimmerman designed to put machine learning models into production for both R and Python. And the way that Vetiver puts models into production is by deploying them as API endpoints. And those API endpoints for the R version are written using Plumber. So Valve can already integrate with Vetiver APIs out of the box. And since the goal of Valve is putting R in production, Valve integrates easily with Docker. So you can use any orchestration method you might use in AWS, Azure, GCP, or even DigitalOcean to deploy those Valve apps. If you're familiar with Python, Valve is kind of akin to G-Unicorn for scaling up fast APIs and Flask apps. To understand why Valve is so powerful, we need to understand how Plumber actually works and what its limitations are. Plumber works by writing a function definition and providing special annotations using a special comment character. If you've written package documentation using Roxygen, it should look familiar. Essentially, there are three main components to a Plumber API. There's the function definition, the request type, and the API endpoint. If we run a simple Plumber API from RStudio, we'll see that we have a nice swagger UI that we can interact with and test queries with. In a nutshell, Plumber works by spawning a web server using the HTTP UVR package. That web server then captures incoming requests, takes those parameters and any other associated data in the body, and then identifies what endpoint that request was going to and passes that data along to that R function. The output of that R function is then serialized, so either converted to JSON or HTML or whatever other format, your API endpoint is gonna be returned and then sent back as the response to the user. For example, we might be calling this add to endpoint. The process looks a little bit like this. We have an incoming request and we have the endpoint in red and the parameters in blue. That request is captured by the web server. And then in this example, we have two endpoints, add to and echo. Web server is then gonna identify which endpoint this request was for and pass along the data to the correct R function. Then the output of that function is serialized and sent back to the user. So you can see how this is powerful. But there's one thing holding this back. This is all running in a single R process. R, just like Python, is single-threaded. This means that each request that comes in has to be processed in order. Valve helps solve this by being able to run multiple Plumber APIs concurrently. Valve is built specifically for Plumber, it's written in Rust, and it's powered by the Tokyo framework. Instead of having a single Plumber API handling all incoming requests and processing them, there's another web server in front of it that has a number of predefined workers handling incoming requests and passing them along to each worker. Each one of these workers is capable of handling a request and processing a response. Each of these requests, as they come in, gets allocated to one of the available workers. Then those workers take that request and sends it along to an available Plumber API in this connection pool. That Plumber API is then gonna process the request, capture the response, and send it back to that worker. That worker is then gonna send that response back to whoever made that request. Why this is so cool is that instead of being able to handle one request, we can handle as many requests there are workers concurrently. So if we have five workers and five Plumber APIs, we can handle five requests at the same time. So how do you actually install Valve? There are two ways to use Valve. 
The first is to use the Rust CLI tool or the command line interface, which I, I personally recommend. And then we can use the R package that wraps that Rust CLI tool. If you don't have Rust and Cargo installed, I'd really recommend giving it a shot. It's the second easiest programming language to install just behind R. Just run this one line command here. Once you have Cargo installed, run Cargo install Valve RS with no default features. If you're still intimidated by Rust, you can also install the R package from the R universe. The R universe provides binaries for Mac, Windows, and I think Ubuntu 22. The rest of this is just gonna be a demo and you can follow along with the GitHub repository that I'll link below. All right, now I wanna demo how to actually use Valve. So for this example, I'm gonna be running a simple plumber API with just one endpoint. It's called ZZZ. And what it does is it just takes a number and it sleeps for that many seconds. We're gonna run this plumber API using Valve and we're gonna spawn 10 workers in 10 plumber connections. But when we start this, you're gonna see that there's only just one plumber API running. And that's because we haven't had enough concurrent requests coming in to justify spawning the additional plumber APIs. We wanna reduce the amount of resources that we're using. To illustrate how effective Valve can be, we're gonna create a function called sleep. The sleep function is gonna ping a port and provide a amount of time to sleep for. And we're gonna pass in a port because we wanna pass in either the 3000 port where the Valve app is listening, or a different port for just a single plumber API. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the fur package, which if you're not familiar with it, it's super cool. It's like per for iteration, but you can iterate across multiple sessions or cores or whatever you'd like. So we can run a function in R in parallel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this sleep function across 10 different workers. And now we're gonna run this. And when we run it, we're gonna see that it takes somewhere between three to four seconds to run entirely. And since there's 10 workers and 10 fur workers, it should, in theory, each worker be running concurrently. But it took four seconds. And you'll see that that's because we were actually spawning new plumber APIs in our connection pool. So if we run this again, it should be about two and a half seconds. And the third time, it should be about two seconds entirely, which means each request was handled concurrently. Now let's call just a single plumber API and run the same request. It takes a lot longer because that one API is handling all 10 requests. Now I wanna illustrate how you would run a Valve app directly from R. This just simplifies using the CLI to wrap the same functionality as an R function. So to run this, we're gonna use Valve Run and it has the same arguments as the command line tool. And to see the arguments from the command line tool, we can type Valve dash dash help. Um, and the documentation is similar for the Valve Run function. Now for a last example, I wanna illustrate how you can use Valve with Vetiver. And since Vetiver models are deployed using a Plumber API, they'll work right out of the box. I've created a sample Plumber API based on Julia Silge's recent-ish screencast where she produces an XGBoost model to predict childcare costs. Using this Plumber API, we could deploy it to a production environment right away, but we might be able to eke out a little bit of more performance if we use Valve to run this in parallel. To run this as a Valve application, we just need to provide the path to the Vetiver API and then specify how many workers we want and how many plumber connections we want. And it's that simple. What I haven't covered today is how to integrate Valve with Docker. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's Docker. What do you expect? If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please, please go to the GitHub repo and give it a star. Even more, please give it a try. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. I want to make more videos. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Josiah Perry and harass me with whatever questions you might have.